In 1946, an incident occurred involving an Exolite screwdriver at the Los Alamos testing facility. Physicist Louis Sloten was conducting an experiment. He used an Exolite screwdriver to keep two beryllium hemispheres separated around a plutonium fissile core. His screwdriver slipped, causing the nuclear reaction to go critical. Sloten would die from the radiation poisoning nine days later. The screwdriver survived. Today, this screwdriver is stored in a secure government facility, pending further investigation. Hey guys, today we're going over the history of the Exolite Company. They're that company that made those cool, translucent colored, handled nut drivers. The Exolite story begins in 1921 with the founding of Park Metalware by a group of friends in Orchard Park, New York. Their first products were these solderless wire connectors under the Gillet brand, as well as some unusual adjustable wrenches sold under the Excel brand. The Exolite name was first used in 1929 for their screwdrivers, which were the first screwdrivers made with plastic handles. Their nut drivers debuted sometime in the 1930s. While Exolite didn't invent the nut driver, they were the first to coin the term nut driver. In 1942, they started producing their signature color-coded handles, where each size would be a different color. During World War II, Park Metalware produced ammunition feeders for U.S. ammunition factories. In 1953, Park Metalware would officially change their name to Exolite Incorporated. Throughout the 1950s and 60s, Exolite would produce many specialty tools for the electronics industry. Radio, TV, telephone, and early computer technicians frequently used Exolite tools to make their repairs. Often buying purpose-built briefcase-style kits geared to their particular trade. So yeah, Exolite invented the first EDC man purse. Exolite would produce two different types of interchangeable bit screwdrivers, one with a hex style connection and one with a winged tang style connection. These screwdrivers are still being produced today. Another Exolite innovation was their torque amplifier. This was basically just a thick handle that you could attach to any of their mini nut drivers to get extra grip. Their miniature nut drivers became a staple of electronics hobbyists from the 1970s all the way through present day. In 1973, Exolite would get bought out by Cooper Industries. Cooper had previously purchased the Weller brand of soldering irons, as well as Lufkin tape measures, so products from other Cooper brands started to cross over into Exolite's catalog. When Cooper merged with the Danaher Corporation in 2010 to form the Apex Tool Group, the Exolite name was changed to Exolite by Weller. I'm not sure why they did that. Exolite and Weller had always been two separate brands. In a totally shocking and completely unexpected move, Apex moved all of Exolite's manufacturing overseas. Honestly, the quality of the China-made Exolite isn't that bad. It seems to be the same quality as the USA-made stuff. The issue is they're still charging USA-made pricing for it. Today, there's no mention of Exolite on Weller's website, so they may be separating the brands again. 
Apex still lists them as one of their brands on their website, so I don't think they're killing off the brand. And Exolite tools are still widely available online. I always get a kick out of the multicolor translucent handles. The mini nut drivers are still useful for electronics work. I also like their needle nose pliers and flush cutters. So I do recommend checking out the brand if you haven't already. Used Exolite tools are all over eBay. I'd take a used example from eBay over a new made in China one any day. But that's just me. Okay, so before we end the video, I want to revisit the Demon Core incident thing. I'm sure somebody will say that I'm making that up, but it really did happen. There's a New Yorker article, I'll put a link to it in the description, that has some high-resolution photos in it. If you download this one here, now I'm going to zoom in on the screwdriver, and you can see it clearly says Exolite on it. It's upside down, but here's the X. C-E-L-I-T-E. -E. Where it gets questionable is the fact that these photos aren't from the actual incident. They didn't have a dude walking around with the camera when it happened. These photos are from a reenactment that they did afterwards when they were trying to figure out what went wrong. But an Exolite screwdriver is seen in the photos, so we know they used Exolite products at Los Alamos. So I think it is pretty likely that it was an Exolite used in the actual incident. The part about the screwdriver being stored in a secure facility, where it's being investigated for paranatural powers, that part I made up, but everything else is true. I highly recommend checking out the article if you want to learn more about the incident. Thanks everyone for watching. Be sure to check out my other tool lore videos. See you later. Bye.